when we describe the image of a Benben root dynamic analysis and phase tracking modeling in a Benben CDR design. Also, we will show how the root latency will cause the limit cycles, but the root latency will have more impact than just the thread limit. Perhaps we could try a few jitter tracking images with variable latencies and see what happened. In addition to a jitter tolerance jitter specified in most protocols, a specific sinusoidal jitter AJ would be also defined at most protocols, like 10 GKR Ethernet, PCIe Connect, DisplayPro interface, etc. The SJ modulation frequency is roughly 50 MHz to 300 MHz, and the modulation amplitude peak to peak is roughly 3% UI to 13% UI. Therefore, in our following tracking images, we pick a reasonable 100 MHz and 10% UI SJ as our case study, which should cover most of the specification reasonably. Let's start with the zero latency ideally and see what the maxima phase error is between the input data and output recovery clock. The zero latency means the phase detector PD output will send the early or late control after comparing the phase difference between the input data and output recovery clock immediately to the VCO. Then the VCO will respond to adjust its output phase immediately without any delay. Of course, the zero loop latency does not exist, but the evasion image could provide you with a baseline performance should be. In any type of CDR, the loop latency would be a big issue. Therefore, we could just apply our Ben Ben loop dynamic model as a pass order for the latency evasion for all kinds of CDR. In this example, we put a 8 gigabit per second PIBS7 signal source without any random jitter RJ but modulated with a 10% UI in amplitude and 100 MHz in frequency. In this case, the maximum phase error over 12,000 bits would be 11% UI which is slightly larger than the input 10% UI SJ, and not too bad. What happens if we increasing the root latency? Think about the stability image for 5 seconds. Bingo! Any feedback loop would have stability concerns, especially if the delay in the loop is increased and result in positive feedback. If we swap latency image of 2UI, 5UI, 10UI, we could see the phase error between the input data and output clock is increased and more than twice the input phase movement. Why is the phase error more than twice of the input phase movement? Think about the all phase image for 5 seconds. Right, if we loop around 2000, to 2200 bits, the phase movement of the clock are almost all of the phase of the input phase. For example, the positive peak phase of the clock is almost the negative peak phase of the input data and vice versa. Therefore, the phase error will be twice the phase movement of the input data due to the 10 UI delay. Intuitively, the phase correction information sent to the VCO was for 10 bits of duration time before, not at the moment. So, when the VCO starts to correct the phase error, the data's input phase already moves in the opposite direction. In addition to the opposite direction of the phase tracking, the VCO phase correction may also have the same phase overshoot due to the no transition period. Obviously, the delay TD should be minimized as shown here by sending the PD output directly to the VCO 
as soon as possible. But there are still a few subtleties stopping us. Can you think about the sampling image for five seconds? Correct. For the 2x oversampling band band PD CDR, the clock must sample the two data samples and one transition sample to figure out if the clock is earlier or later than the input data. Therefore, the decision must be made after two UI or two data samples, which would be a big portion of the delay. Of course, the extra exclusive get delay and the VCO's response time angle delay could be minimized to be less than one UI big period delay if designed properly. So we should be in a good shape with the loop latency of the proportional path. While the loop latency would still be an issue if we pay much attention to the design here, think about the frequency of say and integral path images for 5 seconds. Right, the data array of the C-Link would have a certain frequency offset between the transmitted data of D-In and the receiver's local clock frequency, Fx. Why is that? Think about the reference clock for 5 seconds. Bingo, even though both reference clock of Tx and Rx are crystal oscillator with very accurate frequency. Both crystal oscillator is still different at different locations. Therefore, there is a reasonable to have a few ppm frequency offset and multiply by the big frequency. If that's the case, the CDS clock frequency offset from the input data array will cause the pooling range issue. So, what can we do? Think about the integral path image for 5 seconds. Correct. We must add the integral branch to include the charge pump and loop filter to track the frequency offset slowly, which would certainly add more latency in the integral path, even though we have very low latency, less than 3 UI delay at the proportional branch to track the phase error between both the input data and output card quickly. So both integral and proportional path should work properly together to track the frequency and phase offset respectively. What else could be the issue? Think about the gain ratio images of both paths for 5 seconds. Yes, the higher gain ratio between the integral path and proportional path will cause a more unstable than the higher phase error. As you can see, with the proportional 3UI loop latency, the phase error will be 16% UI if the integral path gain is zero, which provides the baseline maximum phase error you can achieve. But that's unrealistic. Therefore, we should start to increase the integral gain to check the frequency offset. With a 0.5% gain ratio of the integral path and proportional path, the maximum phase error will only increase by 2% UI, but it reaches up to 33% UI phase error if the gain ratio is 4 times, which is 2%. So, the Simple phase error images should tell you the gain ratio should be as small as possible to keep the loop stable. Think about the parameter images and how you could do that for 5 seconds. Bingo! The charge pump current and the integral capacitor says integral gain and the gain ratio relative to the proportional gain. Therefore, it's very clear we could make a less current, and so the less integral gain would be. But do you see any issue with the smaller charge current? 
Think about the mismatch image for five seconds. Correct. A less current will lead to a bigger current mismatch between the up current and the down current. Then the mismatch current will cause the frequency drift if there is no data transition, which should be in a tri state and no frequency drift in a no mismatch. So what else we could do? Great. We could just increase the capacitance of the loop filter. However, it's obvious the chip area would be limited or the capacitance would be very expensive since it does not do anything for high speed circuits, but only reduce the DC current mismatch here. Alright, in addition to all the circuit images from the intrinsic CDI design trade-off, what else could cause the latency externally? Think about the input data transition images for 5 seconds. Right, another data dependent jitter DJ from the CDR is the dependency of the input data pattern. The long run pattern will cause the CDR more latency than the short run pattern. Here is the phase error image of a PRB31 that would degrade. 6% UI more than PRBN7. Why would that happen? Think about the non correction images during the no transition for 5 seconds. Excellent. As you can see, each blue dot means each data transition. When there are no data transition, the clock path is almost in a tri state without any phase tracking. But the phase of the input data keep moving, which would create latency between the input data and the output clock. The phase image shows extreme latency at both peak direction, and hopefully, you can understand why the long run pattern with longer consecutive one or zeros would result in latency impairment in a CDR. Here are the summarized images of why you need a low loop latency in a CDR design. Similar to the JTAL, most specification defines the edge for the CDR to benchmark its tracking ability. Therefore, we could continue last time's Ben Ben CDR loop dynamic analysis to understand how the loop latency impacts the loop phase error between the input data and up clock during the input jitter tracking behavior. With the first order proportional path and zero delay of loop latency, we could use maximum phase error as a baseline number. Even with a minimum latency, roughly 2 UI from the nature of a 2x over sampling 2 data samples, the maximum phase error could still degrade further since it's not practical to only have a proportional gain. In reality, the frequency offset between the input data and up clock is due to the frequency offset of both reference clocks. Therefore, we need to add an integral path which is inherently big latency. To mitigate the integral path latency impact, we need to reduce its gain by increasing the loop filter capacitance over reducing the charge pump current. However, both integral gain reduction images are also trade-offs with the chip area over the current mismatch for no data transition in a tri state, which would add latency in addition to the intrinsic CDI design parameters. So we showed an image of how our PRB31 further degrades the phase error by introducing the latency in the tri state. If there is a further current mismatch, then think about the stability images for 5 seconds. We don't talk about that now, but probably in our videos. Thanks for watching. Before you go, 
If you are benefiting from those lucky images, I would love to hear your feedback and please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video with people who may be from it.